Hey, hello everybody. Howdy. We're back. We weren't planning on doing this, but... Something occurred to us after we got the um, previous video uploaded about Watchtower soliciting funds. Because Kim and I remembered on our first channel we had evidence that Watchtower did, in writing, solicit funds. Now it's interesting because, you know, with so many doing videos, I haven't heard of this one since back in 2014. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to bring this back to light because we do have, in my opinion, concrete evidence that Watchtower has solicited funds to continue the worldwide education work of Jehovah's Witnesses. And just let me remind everybody, this is very much part of that worldwide education regarding Jehovah's Witnesses. And this is where they solicited funds. We've got our M&Ms. <laughs> well, we're gonna need them. Those are peanut M and M's. I don't really like peanut M and M's. You mean so I get gonna, all of these? You get all of those, sweetie. <laughs> That's why I buy the peanuts on that. Yes. I get some. Oh my goodness! Now, like Mike said, we actually did a series about the Nazi persecution and the Jews <laughs> and Jehovah's Witnesses on our first channel. And I had got them put up on this current channel, and they were like messed up. Someone, you know, had said, hey, you know, this part's missing, and it, you know, it. anyway, I took them all down, and I just haven't had time to edit them and get them back up. And I doubt at this time we will have time to even do that. Yeah, because it was like seven parts. But this part, which was the last part, is really important because... We've got the documents here, and I'm going to put the link to the Jehovah's Witnesses.net, excuse me, .com forum, because this was discussed on that. Unfortunately, the links aren't working anymore since this was years ago. But, you know, since I have these documents, you know, I will put them in my Dropbox and make them available. But the main one is the United States District Court of New York, um, number CV-96-4849. And this is regarding the Holocaust Victim Assets Litigation, the Swiss Bank Litigation. And for those of you who didn't hear about this, um, it started back in December 7, 1999. And they had found some assets in Swiss bank accounts that the Nazis had put, you know, valuables and gold and money in these accounts. And they were going to distribute them to victims of the Holocaust. Well, guess who comes in and solicits in writing that they deserve part of this? And... After reading this, just, you know, momentarily ago, um, it even becomes even more disturbing and shocking when you realize what Watchtower is trying to do by getting out of paying the $35 million um, in the Montana lawsuit. Because the words that they use here to qualify why they should get some of this Swiss money is now going to be used to make these people choke on them words. Well, I'd like to read the first paragraph here on page two because we know now on paying these child abuse lawsuits, they're saying that this, the Christian congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses directs the work, directs the congregations and all of this. <laughs> so I want to read this court document. Concrete evidence. Comes now, the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society of Pennsylvania, herein after Watchtower, the corporate agency directing the administrative and religious work of Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide by its attorney, Carolyn R. Waugh, W-A-H, requesting an allocation of a portion of the settlement fund for Holocaust education and remembrance as well as just and equitable compensation as outlined below. 
Now listen to what they say in the next paragraph. As the attached report entitled Spiritual Resistance and its Cost for a Christian Minority. A documentary report of Jehovah's Witnesses under Nazism, 1933 to 1945, will show the Nazi persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses, which spanned virtually the entire Nazi period, exacted a heavy physical, financial, and emotional toll on a small religious community in all Nazi-occupied land. The report also evidenced that the witness individual and organized stance in opposition to the violent ideology of the regime was a decisive factor in the severity of the persecution resulting in profound losses. <laughs> See, Watchtower is making a petition. They are making a request for this money to cover their losses. Because as it goes on, you will see what their losses entail. So I'll read the next paragraph. Although conclusive documentation may be lacking for the claims of individuals targeted as Jehovah's Witnesses, there are three factors that argue for a favorable hearing for the individual applicants, even where the elusive Swiss connection may be weak. <laughs> Number one, since Jehovah's Witnesses were among the earliest groups to be targeted for sentencing to concentration camps, they were often used in the actual construction of the camps. In some cases, the SS-run camps could, in themselves, be considered commercial enterprises that benefited from slave labor. <laughs> Is Watchtower Corporation benefiting from slave labor now? How ironic. Do you see how stupid these people are? <laughs> Going on. Have some m &Ms. Yeah, I'm, I might, you know, I might form a liking for those peanut M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> because the witnesses had been in the camp, camp systems for long periods of time, they sometimes worked for the camp administration, but without due compensation, of course. <laughs> hey, hey, brothers, brothers, <clears throat> you want to get your 10 hours a month so that, you know, you can, you know, have your due compensation of being qualified to pass the mics in the kingdom all. Number two, Mike's going to pop a blood vessel on this one. Witness literature often carried sharp criticism of flagrant human rights violations in Nazi Germany. This was true of witness literature produced and distributed clandestinely within Nazi-occupied Europe, as well as witness literature published internationally. The Gestapo was well aware of the critical and revealing content of the literature, and thus they expended extraordinary effort to expose and destroy the secret printing facilities. <laughs> they confiscated printing equipment, burned stocks of literature wherever it, whenever it was found, and hunted down and executed many of those involved with the underground work. Thus, the nonviolent resistance offered by the witnesses increased the financial, material, and physical losses they sustained. A.K.A. what Watchtower lost. Because remember, friends, they were charging for the uh, literature back then. So this is a financial loss to the Watchtower and Babel Crap Society. Number three, the nonviolent, nonpolitical resistant. Nonpolitical? <laughs> Wasn't Rutherford bashing <laughs> Hitler and the Nazi regime in the literature? It's a good thing they don't think like that anymore, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Look at what they're saying about Russia. Is of that course. not political? Of course. I digress. Uh, Non-political resistance of Jehovah's Witnesses to Nazi policies is distinctive for its duration and consistency. It is not possible to quantify the losses suffered by families whose mothers or fathers were given lengthy sentences in camp or prison because of their faith. Beyond the lost wages, lost property, and lost years are the intangible costs suffered by all victims of Nazi terror. 
Unlike other victims, however, most witnesses had a choice. Generally, they were targeted solely because of their religious convictions. Witnesses were offered the opportunity to avoid persecution simply by renouncing their beliefs. Therefore, by virtue of the length of the persecution and the nature of their resistance, we ask that the court grant special consideration to the applications of witness survivors or their heirs, which will no doubt be few in number. <laughs> Further, the court may allocate a portion of the settlement to be used for purposes of Holocaust education and remembrance. Combating intolerance and indifference is extremely important work. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. The Watchtower and individual Jehovah's Witnesses have expended hundreds of thousands of dollars to promote awareness of the Holocaust and its lessons. And may I remind everybody that Watchtower was a big supporter of the Holocaust Museum there in New York. Well, you know, here again, guys, here again, <clears throat> Why isn't the Washtown Bible Tract Society promoting the awareness of the plague of child abuse infecting Watchtower? Oh, no, no, no. Let's shut up the victims. That's different. No, it's no different. These guys are evil. And look at the hypocrisy. Look at the hypocrisy that we're reading in this document. The solicitation for funds. Oh, it gets even better. Going on, the Watchtower and its affiliate branch offices have made educational and academic presentations free of admission charge. <laughs> free admission. In the United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Israel, and most countries of Eastern and Western Europe, more than 400 seminars and exhibitions have been held in Germany alone, often in co cooperation with concentration camp memorials, research in institutions, and museums. Important research and archival work is being conducted in Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Poland, Russia, Israel, and other places. The few remaining witness survivors have used their waning vitality to speak to young people, educators, and scholars about their experiences and those of their martyred fellow believers. If the court sees fit to allocate a portion of the settlement fund to the Watchtower to continue this work of re remembrance, we believe it would constitute fitting recognition of individual witnesses who suffered and died while maintaining their faith and human values. And, you know, that would be a great gesture, you know, if it was true. You know, if we could believe Watchtower had pure motives, you know, good motives, but, you know, after everything that we have learned, we just can't believe, you know, that they have a heart and care about the actual victims. But see, <laughs> there, but there's the solicitation for funds to continue the Bible education work. So they don't operate solely on donated funds. They solicit funds. Some witnesses died prematurely and left no heirs to make a claim to the Swiss Bank Settlement Fund. However, the legacy of spiritual resistance that they left behind is of great value in the education of future generations about the importance of standing up for the dignity and value of human life. And, I mean, this just breaks my heart and brings tears to my eyes that, you know, they don't care about the children and, you know, they're going before the courts, you know, with this BS. It yeah. just makes me very angry. Standing up for the dignity and value of human life? Watchtower? You're hiding the pedophile problem, the child abuse problem. You're hiding this. And yet you had the balls to solicit these funds and use words like stand up for the dignity and you knew damn well at that time that you petitioned the court for this money you were also hiding the child abuse problem this next part is even more disturbing representing these individuals the watchtower would be pleased to devote any allocated money slow, solely to the interests of holocaust education and the remembrance of the prisoners who bore the purple triangle according as the court might stipulate 
realizing that thousands of survivors and heirs will apply to the court to receive a portion of the settlement fund, Watchtower is not in a posi position to recommend a certain percentage to be allotted for the purposes outlined above, nor are we able to suggest what portion of the fund should be allotted to individual witness survivors. Watchtower acknowledges that no amount of money can fully compensate for the losses of any victims of Nazi persecution. What about paying the child abuse survivor in Montana the $35 million that the court allotted her? You know, man up and pay all of these child abuse lawsuits. Well, what about putting money in the redress in Australia so that a portion of the fund can go to the child abuse victims? You, oh God, you guys have no idea how I feel right now about this bullshit that Watchtower is perpetrating on United States, oh hell, world victims. However, if the funds provided by the Swiss bank settlement can symbolically or practically mitigate the human suffering of survivors or their families, or if it can advance the work of education and remembrance, the money will have been well spent. In this allocation process, we rely on the court's equity and fairness. What about the equity and fairness of a jury trial, Watchtower? A jury of your peers found you guilty for child abuse and awarded $35 million. Even in Cantus, uh, Conte's case, $28, $26 million, whatever it was. Oh, that's too much money! That's too much money! We're going to go broke! We don't have the money! Oh, please, Judge, please! What about the human dignity that you're stealing from people? These victims! And you sit in your kingdom halls and silence the voices by clapping. It's disgusting. Wherefore, in the light of this information, Watchtower respectfully requests an award in harmony with the just and equitable principles outlined in the settlement order. December 7, 1999. Respectfully submitted, Carolyn R. Wad, Associate General Counsel, Watchtower and Bible Track Society, Pennsylvania. You know, this needs to go to Zalkin so that Zalkin can use their words against them in a court of law, fighting for the dignity of these poor children that have, that have been abused. We've got everything we need, friends. <laughs> we just have to know how to use it. Now, I tried to find some more recent documents to see, you know, if Watchtower was awarded any money, um, and I couldn't find anything. Like I said, a lot of these links um, of these documents are not working. And the only thing I found was this Holocaust Victim Assets Litigation, um, the fund distribution statistics on December 31st, 2015. And it just has, um, you know, like looted assets class, the slave labor class, one and two refugee class, insurance awards, incentive awards, victim list project, you know, and when you go to the website and look for an actual name. I could not find Watchtower on there at all. Um, so this might be something that if somebody wants to investigate, you know, here's the information. Well, th there again, I mean, it really doesn't matter whether Watchtower was awarded any money or not. They made a petition. They solicited funds and they were trying to get compensated for magazines that were burnt, books that were burnt, printing presses that were torn down. They're trying to get compensated for that and it was all covered up and hidden within the Holocaust Museum in the Purple Triangle people. Okay, now I just found here on page three of this document, funds authorized, slave labor number one, $1,450 each. Uh, under IOM, I think it is, it has $34,958,050. And then over on the far right, it has for 24,109 Roma, Jehovah's Witnesses, Homosexual and Disabled Holocaust Victims Claims Approved. So they were in part, they were part of, you know, Award. that funds authorized. Through, this, through slave 
labor. And then under refugees, um, $3,625 um, each. Um, it has for 235 Roma Jehovah's Witness homosexual and disabled Holocaust victim claims approved. So it does include Jehovah's Witnesses in with that group. And then um, there is a lot of um, small print here, but I found this interesting. It says, in a uh, page four on uh, number two, inadmissibility decisions were claims that the CRT determined to be ineligible to participate in the deposited assets class process. Under the terms of the settlement agreement, only the accounts of victims or targets of not Nazi persecution were payable from the settlement fund, with the exception of slave labor class 2, which were open to all Nazi victims. The settlement account defines victims or targets of Nazi persecution or, or as those who were or were perceived to be Jewish, Romani, Jehovah's Witnesses, disabled, or homosexual. So, you know, it looks like they did get a little bit of money. So this makes it even more disgusting, more deplorable, that, you know, then they have the nerve to go and cry to the Montana Supreme Court, oh, this is extreme. You know, it exceeds your $10 million cap. And, you know, you just see how low and how greedy you know watch her mention the greedy lawyers filing these child abuse cases <laughs> yeah, really what about these greedy lawyers that are going after holocaust victims funds <laughs> unbelievable yeah i know watchtower suffered you know loss of printing presses and so what? literature and stuff like that so what but what have they done to all the children you know worldwide you know, and they can't even join the redress in Australia. This is yeah. a new law. It's a new law. Well, there again, there are those that think they can change the laws and Watchtower will, you know, submit. Yeah. You have no idea, no idea the depth of the evil that is in this organization. You have not a clue. Yeah. So I'm glad Mike thought about this um, Swiss litigation because we had forgotten about it and we haven't really heard anything about it lately. And I didn't think I'd get so damn angry, but holy cow, reading this crap and, and you know, hearing their, their choice words, um, you know, it just, it's I just standing wish, up for the dignity. I just wish you would have thought of it before we uploaded the I know. previous video. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Now something else, I don't have time to mirror this um, because, um, as you can tell, it's nighttime. And um, but anyway, Wendy, she said this is very urgent because the deadline is September thirtieth, twenty nineteen. So we got like six days, and I'm going to put the link down below to her video, and it it's, you can have a say, but you have to be quick. And this is the um, Minister for Australia. And it looks like they are about to vote on the child sex offenders to face mandatory sentences under coalition crackdown. Because we had mentioned about the new law that Australia was right. trying to pass with upping the, you know, repeat child sex offenders. Yeah, to get life in prison. To face mandatory, you know, some of this they're not even serving time in jail or like 18 months I mean this is ridiculous this is ridiculous and at this point you know these type of laws do need to get changed get these laws changed and the um, statute of limitations I would like to see the statute of limitations done away with in every country get those laws changed but don't fight for the mandatory reporting on all of that crap because it's already in place. Yeah. So like I said, I will put the link down below to Wendy's video. And I'm sorry, Wendy, that I couldn't do more on this. But, you know, we're running out of time for this weekend. And um, Monday's my well, busy day. so We get a lot of things that we're doing, too. Yeah. We've got a lot of things that we need to do. And uh, we just don't have time to do it all. 
So anyway, thank you everybody for listening. To and, this rant. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm going to look in the beast. Well, first I'm going to look online to see if I can find the link to these documents. Um, if not, I'm going to go to the beast and get these. And I will put them in the drop box down below. So anyway, thank you everybody for everything. And you have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye.